thanks. So thanks, Lydia, and thanks um, everybody from Nottingham for inviting me to give this talk. So, um, I mean, that's the title. So final right is from homogeneous vector bundle. And, uh, you know, one good thing about this talk is a lot of people in this community knows a lot about funnel varieties. And in, in general, the first slide would be uh, an explanation on what these are and uh, what do we know about these things, but I'm going to be quite fast on this. So before I start, um, let me say that this is a project which uh, is in collaboration with several people, and I will try to mention everybody uh, at the right place. And um, everything is going to be over C, if you're wondering. And uh, that's very important. Um, everything is going to be smooth and projective until I say otherwise. And I feel that this is a pretty important um, specification to say, to do, when we're working with fun varieties, because uh, in this talk, I'm not going to consider um, fun varieties with singularities, however mild they could be. Okay. So in particular, for me, during this talk, a fun variety will be a, a smooth and projective variety, such that it's anti canonical example. Okay. And um, I mean, as you all know, one important feature about final varieties is their boundedness, right? So what this means, and it fix any dimension, and for any dimension, uh, you have a finite number of deformation families of final varieties. So this means that, at least in theory, you can classify final varieties, right? Um, the point is that, you know, if you're looking for an explicit bound for this number of families in each dimension, it exists, but it's hugely not sharp, right? So, for example, this uh, bound is based on the canonical volume, and you know there is a dimension in the formula. And if you plug in dimension equal one, you get that you have at most three to the power of eighteen uh, families of final varieties in dimension one. On the other hand, as we know, there is only one smooth final varieties in dimension one, which is just P one. Okay. So, um, if you go to dimension two, uh, final varieties are of course classified, and there are ten families. So you can take either P1 cross P1, or you can take P2 and you can blow it up in um, up to eight point whenever these are in a, a sufficiently general position. And these are very classical and they're called the surfaces. And then if you go up to dimension three, um, you have 105 final families of final three folds. And um, I like to write them down as 17 plus 88 according to the pickup rank. So the 17 are the one which are prime, so the PK rank is equal to one, and the 88 are non-prime, and the classification is due to many people, and you know, Fan itself, himself, and then uh, later on is Koski, and then Mori Mukai. And if you go to dimension four onwards, um, I mean, there is no classification, and uh, although there are many examples, no, I, I brought down like a few names, and I'm sure you recognize some of them. And uh, of course, there are many ongoing projects, that are attempting to classify final fourfolds, for example, as you know, extremely well using minor symmetry, but there is no final picture yet. Okay, so um, since classification is not known in general, to get some more information and to refine it, one way is to use the index of a final. So if you don't know, let me just quickly uh, remind you that this is the greater integer for which the empty canonical is divisible in the Picard group. And the good thing is that the index is, in the smooth case, again, um, the index is bounded by the dimension plus one of the FANO. And actually, x FANO has index n plus one, if and only if x is the n dimension of projective space. And, um, you know, you can go on for a while. So you say that the index is equal to the dimension, if and only if x is a smooth um, quadric hypersurface of dimension n. And if you, Go down a little bit and you take the index equal n minus one, then uh, x is called the del pezzo manifold and they are classified. And if you're wondering if there is any connection between del pezzo surfaces and del pezzo manifold, well, yes, there is. Actually, this is uh, why they have their names. And um, if you take the index equal to n minus two or co index three, as sometimes it's said, and you ask for the primality condition. So pick a rank is equal to one. Then once again, you have a list of them. So they're called Mukai manifold and they're classified. And actually, these are the varieties which were used by Mukai in order to um, classify final three codes of pick a rank one. And then the last bit, which is completely known, is this case when uh, the index is greater than n plus one over two, and the dimension is bigger, greater than equal than five, and the pick a rank is greater than one. And once again, you have a list by Vishnesky. 
in some sense, the moral of the story is that the higher uh, the index is, the easier, in some sense, is to classify homomorphisms. So um, if you look at this condition, as you can see, the first outstanding case is when you have found a fourfold uh, of index one, okay? So this project has three main aims. So the first one is to produce many new examples with this condition, so dimension four index one. And the second is to establish a dictionary, um, some sort of correspondence between the regular, the regular list of examples and the barational Morimutile cell language. And finally, and let's see uh, how much I can say about this today in terms of time, we want to construct final varieties with special Hodge theoretical properties and to establish link with um, hyperpolar geometry in particular. Okay, so what's our tool of choice or, you know, why there is the homogeneous vector bundle part in the title? So what we want to do is to explore the landscape. Um, and we want to explore the landscape by constructing final varieties in this way. So you, you want to consider zero loss eh, of general section of homogeneous vector bundle over homogeneous variety. So if you're not familiar with the setting, then, um, let me give you a definition, which is quite technical. And I'm going to tell you what is the main example in one second. So in general, uh, the proper definition would require us to start with a Lie group G with a certain set of property that you can find here. So connected, simply connected, uh, semi-simple, complex, etc. You want to have um, some parabolic subgroup P, and you want to have a um, vector bundle on G mod P, which is basically isomorphic to this twisted representation uh, of E, where E is a rational representation of P. So if you are familiar with the setting, all of this is very natural, very normal, et cetera, et cetera. If you are not, this is the typical example. So, you know, one typical example of G mod P is the Grassmannian, or you could take the flood varieties, you, did, you wouldn't change anything. And then a typical example uh, happens when uh, E is completely reducible. And what does it mean to be completely reducible? It means that E uh, is a direct sum of this factor, which are uh, sure, fact sure functors applied to the tautological and the quotient bundle on the Grassmannian. So U is the rank A tautological, Q is the rank N minus K quotient, uh, the determinant of Q is the ample one in our convention. So the Grassmannian for me is the Grassmannian of subspaces, if you're wondering. And you know, the sure functor are indexed by alpha and beta, which are partitioned, okay? So this is all very nice, all very combinatorial. And in particular, let me highlight some advantages. So the first one is like you have a lot of examples, okay? You, by playing with a uh, sure functor or uh, more aptly, I should say, when you play with partitions, you, you can cook up a lot of funnel varieties. And the second condition, the second advantage is that the classification of funnel varieties of this type uh, can be reduced to a combinatorial problem. Okay. So basically, what's the idea? The idea is like if you want to have a funnel, you have to have some bound, uh, for example, on the churn classes of these bundles, right? And having a, a geometrical bound of this type can be translated in bound on the partitions. So what you do is you play around with partition and you enumerate all the possible list of partition, and therefore you can really play a lot with combinatorics. And the third advantage, which is probably the most important to me, is that it's kind of easy to compute invariants, uh, for example, large numbers uh, of final obtaining this way or of any variety obtaining this way um, using quite standard tool such as the borel bot veil theorem and the Kusul complex, okay? Um, let me say a few words on it, just a few. So the real deal of the situation, like the real reason why we're using homogeneous variety is because we want to be able to use borel bot veil theorem, okay? And not just borel bot veil vanishing type theorem, but the full machinery. So we want to be able to describe a cohomology of vector bundle on the ambient variety in terms of representation, and that's it, okay? So whenever you can do this, you can, you know, apply this machine and, uh, and obtain what you want. Uh, so just a little remark, if you, if you um, were not familiar with this example and it didn't make myself clear enough, just keep in mind that, for example, all complete intersection, um, for example, in projective space are examples, but there are much more. And actually I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you some more examples, which were, are very classical and known in literature. So um, one main source of inspiration 
come from uh, Mukai, Mukai's classification of prime final triplets. Okay. So as I was telling you in the first slide, there are 17 families of final triplets which are prime, so they have PK rank equal to one. And if you look at them, you have seven of them, uh, which index is greater than one, and all but V5. And uh, I'm going to tell you who V5 is in a second. I complete intersection in a projective space, possibly weighted. And uh, if you consider the 10 which have index one, and they usually numbered by the index, sorry, by the genus, uh, genus going from two to 10, then you skip 11, and then you have 12. You have that for genus two, three, four, five, uh, these guys are completely intersection in a possibly weighted projective space. So how do you describe the others? Well, the others are described in this way. And um, actually, let me fix the notation here, which is pretty important, and I'm going to use I'm going to use it like uh, through the rest of this talk. So I'm going to write a final as uh, x equal comma, and by this I mean that you can describe the general x, okay, as the zero locus of a general section of the vector bundle f inside G, okay. So I'm going to like stop for one second so you can fix this concept, this notation, because that's the one I'm going to use for the rest of the talk. Okay. Okay, so this is the description of the remaining funnel three folds of Pika rank one by Mukai. So B5, I was mentioning before, uh, it has index two and degree five, and you can describe them as, uh, you see, this is the basically three hyperplane section of Grassmannian two five. So I'm gonna write O1, uh, three times O1 in Grassmannian uh, two five, nice. Then if you start with the um, final three folds of uh, Pika rank one and index one, you have uh, uh, genus six to begin with, which is the first case, which is not a complete intersection. Uh, sorry, yes, which is not a complete intersection of projective space. So you have genus six, which means degree 10, and then you can describe the general guy as the zero locus of a quadratic section and two hyperplane section in Grassmannian two five. Uh, then if you go on, you can take uh, genus seven, and you have the original description by Mukai, which would be uh, a seven um, co-dimensional spin or section of the orthogonal Grassmannian 510, actually of one of the two connected component of this variety. And uh, this is what, you know, the first bundle is what um, it what means. But there is another description, which I think is a little bit more suitable for the rest of this talk. And if you're gonna take like uh, U dual twisted by one, so U is the rank two bundle, and then you have to add a linear section to it. And uh, if you take genus eight, you have five linear section of Grossman into six. And if you take a genus nine, you have uh, three linear section of the symplectic Grassmannian three six. And you see the first bundle wedge two of U dual here, and it's giving you, it's cutting the symplectic Grassmannian three six within the Grassmannian three six. Um, and then if you take genus 10, uh, you have two linear section of this variety, which is defined by the zero locus of this bundle. So Q star twist by one, and it's um, commonly called G2. So it's another homogeneous variety if you want. And then for the last one, uh, genus 12 and degree 22, you have simply a three symplectic press model. And you know, this is kind of peculiar because it's the only one without linear sections. Still, um, you know, I've done a lot of example, and as you can see, not all of them are complete intersection in Grassmannian, but they require some funny, but not, not at all complicated bundles. And um, you might have very well a supernatural question, which is, okay, so I've told you how to get the general member of any families of final trifold of index one and PK um, rank one and index two as well. And the question is, do we obtain all classified final varieties in this way? Okay, so the answer is yes. So this is very classical in dimension uh, one and two, right? Um, and if you go in dimension three, uh, basically the only case which is left is the case of non-prime final triples. So you want to have pick a rank uh, greater than one. And um, I told you they were classified by Mori Mukai. And the original classification basically was done using Mori theory. 
What does it mean? It means that uh, basically this funnel, or in most cases described in terms of blowups of curves or point in other funnel varieties with lower picker load. And this description is beautiful. It's incredibly beautiful to me, but however, it's quite difficult to generalize in dimension greater than true. And then a few years ago, um, Coates, Corti, Galkin, and L basically were able to rewrote more and more classification. And uh, they were able to describe both final trifolds in this way, so as zero locus uh, of f within this GLT quotient. And of course, the aim was to compute the quantum periods of these guys. And in many cases, their model of choice was a complete intersection in a toric variety. And uh, what we wanted to do as a first step, um, we want to rewrite uh, once again basically the Mori Mukai classification in, uh, in our language, which means that the first, the ambient variety needed to be um, Grassmannian or product of such. And at first, we want to check if you could describe the general element of each of the 105 families, uh, as, I, as I told you, uh, only Grassmannians. And, you know, we, we meant this uh, as a sort of toy model and to understand how widely applicable was our method in higher dimension. Okay, so I'm let sorry, me. Sorry, when you say the general, when you say the general element in the family, you mean the general element in the family of a smooth members. So you may not reach all smooth members like that. Um, you mean any smooth member in the family? Uh, let me stick with the general member at the moment. Okay. But um, the way the way the proof work, I'm gonna I'm gonna like spend a few minutes on it, is that we identify um, any fun obtained in this way with the description given by Mori and Mukai, and then to be sure we check the moduli are the expected one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So let me let me mention a theorem and then I'll I'll dip I'll, I'll dig a little bit on this. So you can get all 105 final trifolds, and you can describe them in this way. So as a couple FG, where F is a homogeneous vector bundle, and G is a product of grass model. Okay. And um, I have to I have to add a remark, which is that in some cases we we needed or we wanted um, to use weighted projective space, but this is exactly where weighted projective space were needed already in the um, uh, in the case of Picard rank one trifolds. And uh, in some cases, we need to use homogeneous vector bundle, which were not completely reducible. Uh, these are not strange beasts. These are completely fine objects to deal with, but uh, I'm not going to mention in the next two examples. So these are just a couple of examples to, um, to give you a feeling on what the, situa what the situation looks like, OK? So let me take, to start with, uh, the final trifold 2-16 and this is the Mori, I'm using the Mori Mukai notation. So 2-16, it means a final trifold of Picard rank 2, which is the number 16 in the relevant sublist. Okay. So if you look at the Barasha description, what you do uh, is you need to take two quadrics in P5, the complete intersection of two quadrics in P5, and you want to blow up a conic which is contained in this intersection of two quadrics. And I mean, what you have to notice first is this conic is not a complete intersection in the intersection of two quadrics as well. Okay. And the by regular description that we gave for this guy is in this way. So as ambient variety, you take um, P2 cross the Grassmannian to four, and then you take this section of this Honest vector bundle. So you take the rank two uh, tautological bundle on G to four, G well, because you want it to be uh, of positive determinant. And then you twist it by uh, the O1 on P2, and then you want to add a quadratic section on Grassmannian to four. And I'm going to explain you why this is what um, what it is. And then if you look at another um, example in the Mori Mukai list, which is the final trifold 4.4, so this guy is picking around four. Uh, if you look at the Mori Mukai table, what you need to do is you want to take a three-dimensional quadric, you want to blow it up in um, in two points which are not collinear, and you want to blow it up as well in the proper transform on a conic, of a conic through the points, OK? And um, if you look at our description, what you want to do is you want to take P1 cross P2 cross P4, and you first you want to take two line bundle, so 110 and uh, 002. And the last bundles, which make this variety not a complete intersection, is you want to take the quotient bundle on P2, and you want to twist it by uh, O1 on P4, okay? 
Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna tell you how, um, how we do it, how we did it, and then I'm gonna um, show this in an example. So what's the, the methodology for all of this? So first of all, we run a search, uh, computer-based search actually, to enumerate all the possible final trifles that could be found in this way. So as capital G comma F, and you want to add the adjunction condition. So you want to you wanna add, um, add the fact that, um, you know, this bundle, which is uh, the anti-canonical of the ambient varieties times the determinant of the bundle. You know, if you take the restriction of this guy, this is exactly the canonical of the funnel, is less than zero. So in this way, you get a numerical candidate. The second step is you want to compute uh, some invariance of this uh, numerical candidate. And uh, usually we did compute um, H naught of the anti-canonical, and then we compute the volume, and then we computed all large numbers. And uh, basically to match each couple, uh, which are candidates in the Morimukai list. Uh, and third, the last step was to prove a series of lemma basically allowing us to translate uh, by regular, our by regular language into the Barational Morimuke language and vice versa. And this is quite interesting to be fair because um, this is exactly something that can be generalized and we are generalizing in higher dimension. So these lemma are in some sense here to stay, right? So they're not only valid in dimension three, but they're gonna be valid in general. And uh, let, me, let me just say, let me just say that, uh, you know, when you do step one and step two, you end up with multiple numerical candidates for any element in the Morimukai list. And this is because of course, you know, when the PK rank of this funnel is greater than, than one, then you have multiple barational model. So multiple barational model will correspond to multiple regular model. And um, we had to, to make a choice every time. So if you go to um, uh, our paper, which is on the archive since uh, maybe one month ago or similar, you will see that we, we chose one model per each funnel. And our choice was basically kind of arbitrary. Uh, we tried to follow a logic, which is, uh, which is um, the smallest uh, co-dimension. So the smallest um, dimension of the ambient variety, therefore the smallest rank of the bundle. But, you know, sometimes the rank were equal and we just choose uh, whichever it seems the most convenient and or beautiful and or whatever of this model. Let me let me explain this with an example. Okay. So in you take 216, which was the first of the two examples. Maybe let me just get back one second to it. So it was this guy here, the blow up of uh, two quadrics in a conic. Okay. And uh, the first thing you do is you check that the canonical class is what you expect it to be. So you check the chain class and you see that this is minus H1, minus H2. Uh, H1 generates uh, it's the one of P2 and H2 is the one of G24. And then you use um, maybe Rimarov and then Kosu complex. Uh, and you check that the invariance of this candidate X satisfies what you want them to satisfy. So then uh, the anti-canonical section are 14, then the volume is 22, and then H11 and H22 is equal to two. So you suspect that this guy is actually the 216 from the Morimukai list. And, uh, and then to match this candidate with the actual funnel, uh, you want to, you know, you could use, for example, the following lemma, and we have many lemma of this type. And for example, you, in general, if you want to consider the blow up of a Grassmannian KN in, the, in a sub Grassmannian, which is K minus one, N minus one, you can realize this guy as the zero locus of this honest bundle, so Q box the dual of U in this product of Grassmannian, so K N minus one and K N. And in particular, if you apply this lemma to the first bundle in P2 uh, cross G24, this gives you the blow up of G24 in a P2, okay? And then there was the extra zero to section, and what this extra zero to section did, does is that you cut G24 in an extra quadric and P2 in a conic. So G24 was a quadric in P5, and here you have the complete intersection in two quadrics blown up in a, in a conic. And you know, you have to do this with uh, all of the 105 families of Fano. And for most of them, uh, it was kind of easy. For some of them, the description was already perfectly contained in the work of all and the others, but some of them were particularly tricky. And now, what we wanted to do is, in general, we wanted to um, 
move our attention to the higher dimensional case. You know, I've told you that um, the three dimensional case was some sort of playground and, you know, we want to get things done in a kind of serious way now. Let me mention some ongoing project. Okay? So the first one is describing Kalashnikov's fan of Ulfo, okay? So a few years ago, Elana Kalashnikov found a list of uh, 141 uh, new families of final four folded index one that could be described basically as zero loss of vector bundles in uh, quiver flag varieties of dimension less equal than eight. And quiver flag varieties are completely natural generalization of Grassmannians or homogeneous variety, if you wish. And uh, with Elana herself and Fabio Tanturri, we are describing them um, both from an Hodge theoretical and by rational point of view. And basically what we what we want to achieve is a more style style classification of this 141 uh, form of fault. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example to show what I have in mind and what we're doing. Um, so you take this funnel, which you can find in the in the list in the third paper, um, and it's indexed by the period ID. And for example, it has period ID 689. And uh, if you translate this funnel, which in turn can be described as well as a zero loss of a vector bundle over a product of Grassmannian. And this is a feature that is valid for all 141 fun four folds uh, in this list. You get that you can describe this funnel as the zero locus of this bundle. So one one plus um, Q on P2 twisted by two to five on P2 gross P5. Okay, so you compute this invariance and uh, you see that, you know, it has um, 17 anti-canonical section, it has 51 as volume, and uh, then H22 is two, H31 is two, and H22, um, sorry, the first one was supposed to be H11 equal two, H31 equal two, and H22 equal 41. And you start, you want to try to understand what this is, and of course, all the other numbers except H00, of course, are zero. And it turns out that you can describe this guy as the uh, blow up of X3, in um, S8, where X3 is a cubic fourfold and S8 is a general K3 surface of degree eight, okay? So X3 as a cubic fourfold is not general, but it is Hodge special. And the reason is because um, you cannot have that a general cubic fourfold contains uh, K3 surface of degree eight. And um, so it's not just it's Hodge special, but it is general in C8. And C8 is the asset divisor of cubic fourfold that contains a plane. And in particular, by a long-standing conjecture, uh, this funnel is not expected to be rational. Okay. And let me see that. Let me say just that um, you can see easily that this is general in uh, C8 because you know if it contains a general K3 surface of degree eight, which is the complete intersection in three quadrics, it will contain a plane as well. And you can show that this K3 is general as well. And by the way, um, this should sell a lot of information on the rationality of this final four folds uh, whenever this is possible. Okay. And uh, similarly, what we're currently doing is producing large lists of examples of final four folds in product of Grassmannian with um, similar associated description. And um, of course, we will have to cross check all this data with all the existing database of FANO. And I'm sure you're pretty aware of all the uh, database of fun around and to see how many new examples are there but i think the situation is quite promising and um what are we really interested in is understand how the two picture how the various picture overlap and um which kind of new example we can find in this way okay so let me let me go on let me let me go on to another section is quite related and um let me start by speak, uh, let me start speaking about fauna variety with special Hodge theoretical properties, okay? So what we are particularly interested in is the case of fauna varieties of dimension N um, that have high peak R rank. So what does it mean to have high peak R rank? So in general, for any smooth fauna varieties of dimension N, we have Mukai conjecture, and Mukai conjecture basically is predicting that if you have a final varieties of dimension n smooth, um, the product of the PK rank and the index, actually the index minus one, 
is bounded by the dimension of the tunnel. And it, of course, it is super interesting to uh, look for examples in any dimension of tunnel variety, which are just at the boundary of this conjecture, right? However, if you look at this conjecture, you see that uh, you have absolutely no information on the index one case. Okay, you know there is an index minus one term, and in particular, if you uh, restrict yourself to the fourfold case, the final fourfold of index one, you have that the biggest example is when you take uh, the product of two del pezzo surfaces of degree one, and um, this has pick a rank equal to eighteen. Um, however, I mean, this is not a completely satis satisfactory example because what you would like to do is to find an example of final variety, uh, which pick a rank as big as possible, as high as possible, which are not product. You know, like it's kind of easy to write down last pick a number taking products. So, not products of, of course, del pezzo with del pezzo or um, final threefold with rational curves. And if you take this assumption out, so you don't consider final uh, fourfolds which are products. Uh, the guy, the champion, so the guy with the biggest pick rank known, has pick rank equal to nine, and this is an example uh, which is um, due to uh, Casagrande, Codogni, and Fanelli. And then if you lower a little bit the pick rank, you have one example which with um, pick rank equal to seven to eight, and uh, again uh, Casagrande and Araujo Casagrande. And then. Um, you can, there are six examples which are toric. Uh, the one above are not toric, I believe, with pick a rank equal six, and 20 more examples toric with pick a rank equal to five. And I found them in the list of uh, Batirev. Okay. And of course, if you start taking pick a rank equal to four, there are multiples of examples. So that's not um, super interesting to consider. Anyway, it would be really, really, really interesting to produce examples of final four folds of um, index one. Uh, which have pick a rank uh, greater than golden five. So we we did launch um, a specific tailored uh, search to address this. And from a preliminary research, what we did is we already found one phantom, which is non-toric and extremely likely to be a non-toric point to intersection, which has pick a rank equal six, and um, seventy-nine phantom that have pick a rank equal five, which are not products, of course, and. Um, most of them are likely toric complete intersection, but um, I don't want to uh, to say anything until uh, you know it's all it's all done and understood. Okay. Okay. So if we now move away from uh, dimension four, there is another class of final varieties in higher dimension, which we are particularly interested in. And these are called final varieties of K three type. Okay. So basically, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read and explain to you this definition, which is quite technical. And if you're not familiar or uh, you, know, you don't want to spend too much time in uh, delving into technical definition, I'm going to give you example, like a motivating example in one second. Um, so you take a smooth and projective variety. And first you say that the J cohomology group in its object decomposition of X is of K3 type, so you, you want to take um, the sum of HPQ with P plus Q equal to J. Um, you say that this J cohomology group is of K3 type if uh, it is of Hodge level two. Okay, so basically the string is length three, and the first and therefore the last number of the string it is equal to one. And then if you take a final, you say that X um, X final it's called final variety of K3 type, or in short FK3. If you have at least a J such that this J cohomology group is of K3 type. Okay. Um, let me give you a motivating example. All right. So the first one is from final we already found we already seen before. So you take a smooth cubic fourfold in P5, and it write you write down its such diamond, uh, and you're gonna see that uh, if you look at the central line, you know, of course it starts with zero because it's a funnel. And then this guy is of level three, so it starts with one, it ends with one, and the central number is twenty-one. And then, if you if you are if if you like K three surfaces, you will immediately immediately recognize that there is the numerology of a K three surface lurking around. Okay, and this is actually not a coincidence at all. 
So this is why uh, this panel are called panel varieties of K3 type. And um, I want to mention that there is no reason to ever uh, for this K3 structure to be located a priori in the middle homology. Uh, in this case it is, but we have a lot of examples in which uh, the K3 structure is just spread somewhere. I mean, of course, for if you want a final or fourth order of K3 type, there is no other space. But if you go to higher dimension, which is what we're going to do now, um, you have a lot of space actually. And the second example, which uh, it's the first example of a non fourfold that we can see in this talk, or non threefold, um, is a 20 fold hypersurface uh, in the Grassmannian 310. And this is actually a, a 20 fold linear section. So V sigma is a section of uh, O1 in Grassmannian 310. And in particular, what does it mean to be a section of O1? It means that uh, sigma is a, is a three uh, skew vector in 10 variables. You know, you might very well ask a super reasonable question, which is why are we interested in these varieties? Because what I've done up to now is giving you a completely random cohomological definition. And then for some reason, we happen to be interested in this. Yeah, that's not the way it works, right? Um, so let me let me motivate you this choice. Um, basically, our main motivation for this lies in the study of um, IHS, and IHS stands for irreducible holomorphic symplectic varieties, or you might want to call them hyperkeller. And if you're not familiar with them, uh, recall that these are varieties which are uh, simply connected, and uh, you want to have the uh, space of uh, holomorphic two section which is one dimensional and generated by uh, sigma, and sigma is everywhere non-degenerate, okay? Um, unlike final varieties, which uh, already discussed how they are bounded, it's absolutely not clear if they are bounded or not. Uh, but in general, if you want to write down examples, these are extremely rare, okay? So you do have two classes of example by Bobby and uh, periodic for each uh, even dimension. So you want to take Hilbert schemes of uh, points on a K3 surface and a similar, although not exactly equal construction on a abelian surface, it's called the generalized schema. And then you have two sporadic example by um, here and there. okay? So what's the idea? The idea is that to a family of final varieties of K3 type, you do expect uh, to associate many example of um, IHS, so a hyperkeller, and uh, of different degree, dimension, and even the formation type. But, but, and this is the key of this thing, that final varieties of K3 type are way easier to hunt than IHS. And uh, I'm gonna spend the rest of this, you know, a decent part of the, of the last 15 minutes of the talk is to convince you how you can find this final variety with special structure. And I've told you that you can associate um, to a final variety of K3 type. Can you do it? How, how do you do it in concrete? Well, you know, I've given you up to now two examples of final variety of K3 type, and let me speak about the hyperkeller associated to them. Um, so you start with the cubic fourfold. So from the cubic fourfold, a lot, and by a lot, I mean accountable infinity of hyperkeller have been associated to it. And these have, of course, different dimension, uh, different uh, degree, even different deformation type, okay? But uh, anyway, you can use like a literal plethora of methods from very classical one to recent stability condition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this one, and BD stand from uh, Boville and Janagi, it's probably the most classical one. So what you do is you start from your cubic fourfold and you want to take the variety that parameterize the lines, so the final variety of line, which is not a fun. Uh, contained in the cubic fourfold. And um, you check that this variety of line, it's an hyperkeller fourfold, an IHS fourfold, which happens to be the formation equivalent to the Hilbert uh, squares of two point on a K3 of genus eight. And uh, why, uh, why does it fit in our picture? Well, one of the key um, points of this situation is that you can describe this hyperkeller in our language. So the zero locus of this uh, nice vector bundle, so the third symmetric power of your dual on Grassmannian 2, 6. Nice. And the second example, um, if you start from the linear section of Grassmannian uh, 3, 10, which we call W, 
you can associate to this uh, certain Z, which is in Grassmannian 610, and parameterize the copies of Grassmannian 36 contained in W. And you can check that this is a network failure fourfold, that once again, uh, but this is the deformation equivalent to the Hilbert squares um, on a K3 of genus 12. So before eight, now 12. And once again, you can describe Z in our language as the zero locus of this other uh, quite natural vector bundle on Grossmannian uh, 6. Okay. So what about other fun varieties of K3 type? Um, so there is a bunch of other fourfolds. And uh, when they are prime, so pick a rank equal to one, um, they have an actual or a conjectural IHS, which is linked to it. So the first one, you can take Grassmannian 2.5, and I'm missing a comma over there. And um, you want to take a linear and a quadratic section of it. So that's called a uh, gushan bukai fourfold. Uh, and uh, there is an IHS, which is, which is associated to it uh, via Lagrangian data. And IM and DK stands for um, Iliev, Manivel, and the Bar Kutznishov. But a lot, a lot of people work on this subject, and there is a beautiful theory variety. And then there is another example of um, uh, funnel fourfolds, um, which is of K3 type and which is as well in the uh, list of Kushle. And uh, this is given by this zero locus of this vector bundle. So it means that you have a two form, a three form, and a four form on Grassmannian 3.7. And uh, there, you know, an IHS has been long conjectured to be associated to this funnel fourfold, but um, uh, no one has been able to do it yet. Okay. However, um, there are several non-prime final fourfold of K3 type that we found in our list or in existing databases. Uh, however, in most of these cases, basically the K3 structure comes either from an actual K3 surface, for example, you take, I don't know, um, P4 and you blow it up in a K3. Uh, if it's, I don't know if this is fun, I just three and three in a random example, or maybe from another final varieties of K3 type blown up. So, for example, you blow up uh, a cubic fourfold in a plane or whatever. So, this means that in dimension four, if you consider the non prime case, you have a lot of uh, fools positive. Okay. So, what you would like to do is to extend our search of final varieties of K3, K3 type in higher dimension using the very same tool I've been speaking about for the um, past 40 minutes. And um, you want to do, you want to consider example in our dimension, you want to write down a huge list of them. But how can you do this? Because you see, there's a little, a little thing here, which is how can you translate the condition for a funnel um, to be of K3 type into some numerical condition that, you know, you can run a search on. That's pretty complicated, but you want to do that. And actually it turns out that you can do that. So you want to translate these properties, right? You want to translate these properties and you want to translate it um, into relation between numerical invariants of final varieties. So we have multiple condition of this type, and this is the one I like the most because probably is the cheapest one, the easiest to describe, and it's really the cheapest and allows you to produce a lot of examples of final varieties of K3 type, okay? So how do you do that? You start from a funnel, um, which has to have dimension 2t plus 1. And you want this funnel to have index equal to m, and you want uh, the t, which is the number contained in the dimension, to be dividing m. So what follows is a little technical Hodge theoretical condition, and you want that the level of this uh, y, of the central cohomology of this y, to be less equal than 1, and possibly some extra vanishing. And this means that the cohomology of Y is as central as it can be, or you know maybe it deviates a little bit from being central. But you know if you if you hunt for uh, homogeneous or quasi homogeneous, this will be satisfied. If you take a general, or maybe I should say a smooth element of this um, one over T, so uh, of the anti-canonical, this guy is a final variety of K to a type. So what you did is you moved your search from the actual search of funnel varieties of K3 type to a funnel with strict limit on the dimension, the index, and with, with out of vanishings. And this is doable, right? This is turned out to be doable. 
so we we are working on on it. We're working, and basically we're developing a, a large database of these final varieties in higher dimension. And um, but before, let me uh, let me recap a result of last year, which can be considered the first step in this in this search. So we have this theorem with uh, with Mongarty, uh, that if you consider final varieties of K3 type of dimension greater, in, in particular strictly greater than four. Uh, we found 23 uh, new families of final varieties of K3 type, and um, with dimension ranging from uh, 6 to 20, uh, pick a rank equal uh, 1, uh, 2, and th uh, either 1 or 2, or at maximum 3, and the index, which is uh, between the dimension over 2 and, and dimension over 2 uh, minus 1. Okay. And, uh, you know, this database is growing day by day, but um, um, we want to analyze it before uh, understanding and labeling it. But you know, already in this one, which is already out since last year, um, there are some final varieties which are pretty interesting to us. Uh, let me mention some of them. So the first one, which is actually not in our list because it appeared at the same time independently um, in a paper by Ilya Ben Manivel, is you take a linear section of symplectic Rasmanian 3.9 or if you want, you take the zero locus of this bundle here. So wedge two of your dual plus O1 on Grassmannian 3.9, uh, 14 fold index six. And uh, this is the linear algebra data that describes it. And uh, then another one, which is the first one, uh, which is only in our list properly, is you want to take a linear section of the um, uh, bisymplectic Grassmannian 3.8. So from a geometric point of view, what you do is you take you take the Grassmannian 3.8 and you look for the three planes which are isotropic with respect to uh, a pencil of skew of two skew forms. Or if you want, you could describe it as the zero locus of this vector bundle. So two copies of uh, wedge two of U dual plus O1. And this is an eightfold uh, uh, index three, one K3 structure in H8, et cetera, et cetera. Then there is another one which we call T. And uh, this is given by the zero locus of this bundle, just one bundle, Q star one on Grassmannian 210. This is once again an eightfold, once again of index three, but this is the key, it has three K3 structure in H6, H8, and H10. And let me remark that all of this variety that you are seeing on the screen at the moment are all prime. So the pick a rank is equal to one. And in particular, you cannot uh, explain this three K3 structure in any uh, simple birational term. So, you know, in particular, they are not blow up with center K3 or something similar. Um, then if you take uh, a linear section of this T, well, of course, this is not interesting. You get two K3 structure by left shed separate plane theorem. But then what I think it's more uh, interesting is that you get a three color BL structure in H7. And, um, you know, if you, if you look, if you are wondering what a three color BL structure is, uh, you just have to take every time I say the word K3 and replace with three dimensional color BL. And then the last one, uh, which is actually not properly in our language, but is, it is at the general C locus, it's a six fold in P9, index three, and three K3 structure in H4, X6, and H8. And this is actually um, a classically known surface, uh, sorry, variety, which is called the, the Peskin variety. Uh, and we actually computed this Hodge structure, which uh, was unknown. Okay. And uh, by the way, this is, I mean, the, the last two are particularly interesting. Uh, the one with the K3 and Calabia structure is because um, this is the first example, as far as I know, of a funnel which multiple K3 st uh, Calabia structure of different weight. And the last one, uh, because it has the maximal number of K3 structure with respect to the dimension. You know, you have a six fold, so you start for which H4, then you get H6 and H8. Uh, for a five, for an eightfold, you would have uh, five structure. But so, in some sense, these maximal examples are very interesting. So I just brought down the Hodge numbers of this variety just to give you a picture of the situation. Uh, but what's more interesting for us is that it turns out that all this um, uh, from all these four, from all this variety, you can reconstruct that the bar was an hyperparallel fourfold from each one of them, okay? And you can reconstruct this de Barbois and African fourfold as the parameter space for um, special varieties. Uh -huh. 
in all of them. So I'm writing down a few names, Ilevin Manivel, myself and Mungardi, and Frederick Han. And it would be very interesting to understand if you can obtain the de Barbois M from the above funnel uh, in our language, so as G comma F. And actually the answer is yes uh, for X and Y. Uh, this is in basically containing the proof which I already mentioned. And it is not known uh, for the others yet, but uh, everyone expects this to be possible at some point. Uh, you know, basically it turns out that these above final varieties of Kitri type are related not only via the above was unfocal. So what's the point? Okay, so you have a very different bunch of final varieties. They have different dimension, different index, different everything, okay? Different really everything. But then you uh, kind of unexpectedly uh, discover a link with the same hypercalor. And this is quite strange, okay? So you start wondering what's happening here. And you start wondering if there is any connection between the final variety uh, themselves, okay? So what it turns out is that the Hodge structure is the one coming from a unique, uh, in some sense, master Hodge structure, which is the one of the linear section uh, W of Grassmannian 310. And then you spread and multiply this Hodge structure through a very specific set of correspondences. And this is very strange because um, as we're gonna see in the last slides in one minute, these correspondence are really tricky to write down. And uh, normally you wouldn't think uh, of them, but you're kind of forced to consider these correspondences when you when you know you're kind of obliged to consider them when you see that all these final varieties shares um, a deep link that pass through hypercalar geometry. And this is very strange, right? Because uh, I told you before that the final fourfold, the cubic fourfold, has a lot of different hypercalar link to it. Uh, but on the other end, uh, for W, so for W sigma, the situation is completely different. So to one hyperkeller, there are multiple final varieties that are associated. So the situation is completely symmetrical. Anyway, let me mention this theorem, which is joined with uh, Marcello Bernardara and Lohan Manivel. That he, suppose you can take the you, you take the uh, vanishing component of the 20 dimensional cohomology of uh, W. Uh, and then this, uh, you mean vanishing, you just mean that you throw away everything that it's coming from the ambient cross marion okay so this k is vanishing component is isomorphic to the 14 uh, vanishing component of x the 8 vanishing component of y so this explains the k structure and then to the primitive uh, components of t and p for i of all of them so 6 8 10 in one case 4 6 8 in another and if you're kind of into the story you will notice in me uh, you will know uh, that there is um, a derived uh, definition, derived categorical definition of final varieties of key three type. And uh, so you're wondering if uh, you can basically adapt this statement to the right category. And the thing is, well, kind of. Uh, so what you want to do is first, you want to replace uh, the vanishing homology with the Kuznetsov component of the derived category of this W. And, uh, you know, you would like to predict the shapes of the semi-orthogonal decomposition, and uh, as well, we should be the exceptional object. And we know, we know, we know what you should be. But, you know, we have such a huge number of exceptional objects, and if you have ever done mutation in your life in terms of the right category, you know how uh, nasty this can be. So this means that it's very likely hard to prove. And let me finish with this slide to explain to you uh, which sort of correspondences I'm referring to. Um, so suppose you start from W. So on the right hand side, you want to blow up W in a symplectic in S, which happens to be a symplectic Grassmannian 29. And um, you can project this down to Grassmannian 39 and realize that this is almost everywhere a P2 bundle, but it has special fibers which are P3 over um, some degeneracy locus, which is X. And so you can use a blow up style formula, which is more complicated index, to uh, pass your structure from W to X. And then you, what you can do is you can blow up once again X in another symplectic Grassmannian. And once again, this admit a P2 uh, over symplectic Grassmannian 3.8 that degenerates over Y on a P3. And then if you go to the other side, you can take a P2 bundle over W. I mean, there is a flag 2, 3, 10 lurking in the background here. And uh, 
And then you can, you know, starting from the natural projection on this flag, you can project down on Grassmannian to 10. And uh, you realize that this is generically a P6 bundle that degenerates into a P7, you can guess where, so on T. And then once again, there is another flag, which is one to 10. You take a P1 bundle over this guy. You do a little computation, a little bit of computation, and realize that this guy is the blow up of P9 on P, on the best invariant. And once again, on this side, you have this stratified uh, projective bundle situation, and you can, um, you can realize um, his isomorphism of integral of a structure. And um, you know, if you're kind of versed into uh, the right category and you know our law formula for blow up, uh, this is why I told you that you would like to generalize it. But once again, uh, mutation in the left and then the right hand side can be um, quite tricky. So, okay, um, just to finish, I want to say that uh, what we're doing now is in parallel to our search of a you know, fourfold, we are trying to find uh, a new example of this funnel uh, variety of K3 type in higher dimension. And uh, what we want to see if this situation is actually the standard situation. So every time you find multiple funnel varieties of K3 type, you can find a diagram of correspondence of this sort and uh, a master of structure. And this is somewhat unique to this uh, bunch of variety. And that's because there is the um, unique hypercalor lurking in the background. And um, I don't have um, an answer yet, but um, I'm definitely very curious to see what's going on here. So um, thanks for the attention. Actually.